The purpose of this video is to illustrate some more advanced features in GeoGebra that will be helpful in the geometry classroom. I really like how GeoGebra makes the connections between geometry and algebra. So for those of you that teach units involving coordinate geometry, such as transformations, equations of circles, things like that, I feel like GeoGebra is a really helpful tool. So what I have already on the screen is I have a polygon and I have a line and I want to show you how you can use GeoGebra to illustrate different transformations. So if you scroll down under the tools tab you may have to select the more option but eventually you will come to the transform section so you can reflect about a line about a point which I feel like is not as common as reflecting about a line you can rotate around a point translate by vector dilate from a point and reflect about a circle so I'm going to show you how you can reflect about the line You'll want to already have your polygon and line in place like I have here. But once you select this object, you're going to select the object first and then select the line of reflection. And notice when GeoGebra performs this transformation, it will graph the image and use prime notation, which I think is really helpful if you're trying to have your students understand how this works. Um, you can select some different lines, um, perhaps the x-axis, so it will also perform that transformation for you as well. Um, I'm going to undo that right now just so I don't have two things going on. So remember you have your undo button up here at the top if you ever need that. Another option you have is you can rotate around a point. So I'm going to come up here and create a different point. I'm going to use something besides the origin just so you can see how it works. And when I go down to transform, I'm going to rotate around a point. So again, I'm going to select my object. I'm going to select the center point and then it's going to ask you for how much you want to rotate it. Notice you have the option to change the number of degrees. I know in geometry we usually just do multiples of 90. And you can select counterclockwise versus clockwise. So again, this is a good way maybe to have your students explore on their own what these transformations look like and have them come up with the patterns with the rules for different transformations. So I'm going to ask it to do that. So it took this original shape and rotated it about this point 90 degrees counterclockwise. The next option is translate by vector. So again, you'll want to already have the vector selected. So to graph a vector, that's actually included under the line section. So I'm going to add in a vector from D to this point. And then I'm going to select enter transpoint translate by vector. So I'll go back to my original shape, select it, select the vector, and then I will have that translation that will occur. So you'll notice that if you count the same distance of the units for the vector, in this case up to over four, that's the same that each point has moved. So you can have your students make those connections for how they translate. Um, we have another option of dilate from a point. So I can select my object. I'm going to use the same center point again and select the factor. So maybe I want 0.5 as the factor and there's my dilation. So those kind of cover all the different transformations that are typically covered in a geometry curriculum. So as I said, I think you can really use GeoGebra to help your students kind of explore some of these rules. Um, I have another tab open here. I'm going to show you some things related to circles because I know circles are a big um, part of many geometry curriculums. So the main circle tool is circle with a center. So you can just select the center and put the second point that's on the circle. You can do this on a plain background ground or if you prefer you can show the grid and sometimes this is helpful because you can adjust the values of the circle and get exact measurements if you're you know going to be giving your students specific problems this can help you be a little more accurate and you can always take that grid off if you don't want the students to use that but it can help you when you're designing so the other features I want to show you is you can draw in a sector 
on a circle, so you'll need an additional point on the circle, and then select circular sector. You want to start with the center point first, which to me is a little counterintuitive. I want to select the point on the circle and then the center, or go from the point to the center to another point, but select the center point and then the two points on the circle, and then similar to how it creates a polygon, it's going to shade in that sector as you go. Um, this value of D, if you show that, is showing you the value of this sector area. If you want to find the measure of the arc, so the arc measure, you'll really need to find the angle measure. GeoGebra does not provide the arc measure, so we just use the fact that the central angle measure and the arc measure are the same. If you want to find the arc length, you can use the circular arc tool. So we're going to select the center and we're going to select the two points and it will tell me what the arc length is once I tell it to show that value. So you can find area of a sector, you can find arc length, but you'll need to use the central angle measure for the arc measure. So this may be something that you want to share with your students if you're doing any measurement involving circles. So I hope you found this helpful in seeing some of the more advanced features that GeoGebra has to offer. There's plenty more options available for GeoGebra. The more you use it, the more you'll be comfortable with it, but I hope this is enough to get you started. Good luck!